learning, I like to think of as the heartbeat of life. Um, learning is how things evolve. It's how we evolve, right? Life's always changing. Circumstances are always adjusting, moment to moment, day to day. Learning is how you keep up in nature. So if learning is not just teaching. It's, it's uh, not helpful if you think about this just like what you're trying to teach a dog is all they're learning. Because life is the great trainer. This is how nature operates. Circumstances change. Internal circumstances in my body are changing and my cells are learning how to respond to those things every day. And every single animal in the habitat that they're in, when the weather shifts, the climate shifts, the food sources therefore shift, right? They have to learn to adapt. They have to constantly be paying attention and reading the map to say, all right, I think this might mean this. That's meaningful. I figured that out. So when that little bud appears on that plant, it's going to turn into something I can eat. I'm going to keep coming back and checking on that. And then even over generations, if each of the individuals keeps learning that that plant is meaningful to them and their survival, then actually that information gets passed on in their DNA. Anyone followed epigenetics? This is fascinating stuff. That your genes are actually learning. You're passing on your experiences to your offspring. I mean, it makes perfect sense when you stop and think about it, right? How else would we have gotten here? How else would anything have evolved if what you learned wasn't being passed on other than things you bothered to tell your children because they're not listening to everything that we tell them. And of course, the, the offspring of all these other animals aren't sitting there and just saying, okay, so take notes. Eat the little red thing and not the green one. There is a lot of that going on too and a lot of learning by example and learning by observation. But animals are born just knowing that smells important, that sight is important. This, that doesn't matter to me. This is fascinating. The field of neuroethology studies how individual species and subspecies, and you might as well think of dogs as such, actually are born with the reception system, their sensory systems, to notice certain things and filter other things out. And again, makes perfect sense, right? Because you want to notice the things that you can eat or might kill you, and you want to ignore all the other sensory information in the environment that doesn't really have any bearing on whether you're going to live or die. Because none of us can pay attention to everything all the time. We would die of neurological exhaustion. So we attend to meaningful stimulus in the environment. All that is, it's classical conditioning. This is where behaviorism would really benefit from looking at evolutionary biology. Because we overthink it when we get into the Skinnerian and Pavlovian you know, mindset of the laboratory and the black box and the stimulus and the response and all of that stuff. Yes, that's all true, but it's hyper-controlled uh, language and a perception that keeps it in a very narrow viewpoint, when really this is just life. It's learning how to recognize certain things and learning which strategies are going to be successful for survival. I have to find out what works and what doesn't work. I have to repeat what works, and I have to stop putting energy into doing what doesn't work. All that is operant conditioning. We've got a lot of fancy jargon around that whole idea too, right? And rewarding certain behaviors and punishing other behaviors and, you know, setting up a variable reinforcement schedule and blah, blah, blah. And that's all very 